Hey everybody, it's Charlie from DM Sound, and today we've got the sound system demo on the 2023 BMW 7 Series and its 36 speaker Bowers & Wilkins Diamond Surround Sound audio system. This is going to be an in-depth review. We're going to take a look at how the infotainment system works, take a look at audio inputs, adjustments, controls, speaker locations, then we're going to head out on the highway and listen to these sample tracks while we're rolling, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Now, if you don't care about any of that stuff at the beginning and you just want to hear the music, click ahead in the video. We've got chapters to get you right to the tunes. And if you want to hear the electric version of this car, the i7, check the link in the description. We reviewed that one earlier this year. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. The power opening doors here, greeting us with one of the most controversial and striking designs of 2023 here. And apparently that door doesn't want to close itself. The BMW 7 Series. Totally redesigned, totally immense. This car has a crazy presence. So whether you like the looks or you don't, you have to admit it makes a statement. We got into the electric version, the i7 earlier this year in Palm Springs. We got this one back here at DMHQ. So we're doing the full review. If you wanna see more, check the link in the description. We've got the DM review video, as well as a highway fuel economy test. Now we always do these tests with lossless, uncompressed wave files, and today we've got them going through Apple CarPlay, so they should still be lossless and uncompressed, as well as having them high quality binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving them the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We also do the test with the sound settings set to their factory defaults, just as the Bowers and Wilkins engineers intended, so let's take a look at that now. Nice big iDrive 8 infotainment screen here, you can control it via touchscreen or via this very nice rotary knob here, this glass control. We're going to go here to media and media and radio settings and then over to sound. We've used the reset settings screen or button. So let's start at the top sound profiles. You've got studio, concert, on stage, and rear. And this is strange to me because studio provides the purest audio experience. It's going to sound most like the true recording sound. But yet when you reset the system, it goes to concert, which is saying it experienced the acoustics of a concert hall. I don't think that sounds as good. Concerts are cool, but they're not super great for audio quality. But let's listen to all four of the modes. So I will go back to concert because I'm sure the system wants to show off some of the 3D effects in this sound system, but later on in the test I'll probably go back to studio because that's going to give us the highest quality audio experience. Then below that you have adjustments for immersive sound and this is going to allow you to change the intensity of that surround effect. So over on the right we've got 3D intensity, let's go through there. And then 4D bass experience. That's actually adjusting these exciters, they're called. They're speakers in each of the four outboard seats. And those create a little bit of a rumble in your back to make you feel the bass. You're not really gonna be able to notice much of a difference from the headphones and microphones, but let's turn it up and down just in case. Right now I'm getting a lot of vibration in my back. And now I'm not getting any. So it doesn't actually change the sound, but it's, it's kind of a cool gimmick. I usually have it pretty low or off. Then you have personal surround intensity, and I do like this because you can adjust how much sound you're getting out of the two speakers that are in each headrest. So let's turn it up. I'm actually gonna back the track up a little bit here. Since we've got so many sound adjustments. So it's subtle, but you can hear a difference in the surround effect there. What else do we have? Reset, all right, we'll reset all those settings and then head back here for the experience of sound. Let's, let's come back to that one. Let's go through treble and bass real quick. don't 
like these glass controls. They're not very good. There's something about these center controls in this model. They've reduced the amount that you can push this uh, center knob and it, it makes it harder to use and it's harder to push the home and, and back buttons. Let me know in the comments uh, if, if you had an older BMW and then you moved to something in this newer generation, the 23s, and you've had trouble utilizing. I've only really noticed it in this car and a little bit the M8 that I drove recently as well. Then you have front, rear, left, right, fader, and balance controls. And if that wasn't enough, you've got a nine band equalizer, which I really like having in a premium audio system like this. So you can really tweak the sounds to your experience. Now let's go and do the experience of sound. I like how BMW has been doing this as well to really show off the sound system. Chris Brower, you messed it up. So apparently if you get a text message, it messes up the experience of sound. I'll, I'll cut back in here so we can pick it back up. Okay, and that's all we got for audio adjustments. For controls in the new 7 Series, you've got a volume scroller down here. You can kind of do it with your thumb or your forefinger depending on how your hand's positioned. You also have volume adjustments on the right side of the wheel. For track selection, you've got physical controls down here below the volume scroller. You can use the touch screen or the rotary knob if you're on the right menu or you've got this scroller and back and forth selector on the steering wheel. For audio inputs, you have your standard AM, FM, Sirius XM satellite radio, Spotify built in, Bluetooth streaming support, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and you've got USB-C ports in here as well. So what does that mean you're missing? Well, there's no 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack, no USB type A ports, just confirming, yep. No wired Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and Spotify is the only streaming service I see built in. Maybe it's possible to install some other ones, maybe in the future, but for now, that's what you got. Speaker location. As I said, this is a 36 speaker system, but a lot of those speakers have to do with the surroundness of this system. So uh, you're really not getting that much more than the, the more basic system in here from main speakers. Also, it's really powerful, almost 2000 watts. Starting in the bottom left, you've got a woofer, one, mid-range, two, tweeter, three, four, five, mid-range and tweeter up front, six, seven, eight on the other side. Underneath the seat, subwoofers, nine, 10. Opening up the back door, as you can see, it takes a second to do automatically. Woofer, 11, mid-range, 12, tweeter, 13, 14, 15, 16 on the other side. Then that's when you get into all the surround speakers. So you've got tweeters up top, 17, 18, 19, 20 in the ceiling. And then in the headrests, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. And then exciters in the seats, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36. While we're back here, I'm actually gonna step into the back seat and listen to some of the tracks from back there since I know people are likely to be chauffeured in this car. You've actually got some pretty cool controls back here as well, including a huge 8K theater screen up here. So let's see we can bring this up. Got these controls on the side. Now, unfortunately, when the driver's seat is in my comfortable position, I can't lower the seat. I don't see a way for me to adjust the driver's seat from here, which is a bit frustrating. So I actually have to reach up, I guess even get out and move that seat forward. Okay, now I've moved that seat forward. So we should be able to open the display. You see it coming down. And the shade comes up so we can see it a little better. And any moment now, as it boots up, there we go. Giant screen, and it's a touch screen too, so you can really play around with this. Let's get it over to this side. Let's go to audio. We don't have any headphones connected, but we can adjust. Um... Can I actually adjust sound settings from back here? I don't think so. I can change tracks and I can change input. 
but it doesn't look like I can change audio settings, but let's at least turn it up and just get a listen from back here. Oh, there we go, I can change sound settings, cool. Not quite as clean and crisp of a sound back here as it is up front, but still pretty darn good. All right, I'm gonna get this stuff put away so that we can head out on the road.
mark of a truly great sound system is being able to crank the music up and not get any difference or distortion or harshness in any elements of the music. I can listen to this song super quiet, I can listen to it super loud, I can listen to it in surround or studio or whatever, and it sounds good and solid and easy on my ears throughout all settings. That's what makes this system really, really great. It does help that it's dealing with over 1900 watts of available power. <laughs> That's gonna go a long way in helping this system be able to bring out sounds from everywhere, from the lows, the mids, and the highs. I like having the bigger subwoofers under the seats and then having some door woofers as well and then these mid-rangers and tweeters all taking care of everything. Everything's really nicely balanced and I love the sound. For this next track, we're gonna turn the bass all the way up and see what sort of rumbliness we get. thoughts on the 36 speaker Bowers and Wilkins system here in the BMW 760i. One of the beautiful things about testing sound systems is that at the end of the day they really are subjective. N no one can universally agree that there is a best sound system out there. That's kind of why I do the the tiers is because we can pretty much all agree on what a certain ranking uh, most systems would fall into. And this is easily an S tier sound system. The power, the balance, the crispness, everything is there. I really have no complaints. From a personal, personal standpoint, a lot of people like to ask, oh, what's the best sound system you ever heard? I usually give like a top four or five because if you like more of a pure, warm sound, you go with something like a Mark Levinson. If you want a really showy, uh, high bass, high tweeter, really like flashy sort of sound, you wanna go a little bit more toward a, a Burmester system. 
I like the Bowers and Wilkins because they split the difference between the way they look, the way they sound. It sounds fun and bright and powerful, but at the same time still has a crispness. Now that's dangerous, just being stopped like that. Um, I, I have a slight preference toward the Volvo systems, but I would have no problem sitting and listening to this day in and day out. I really do think this is an impressive sound system. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to hear more or see more on this car, check the links in the description. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.